I built this solar generator as a temporary backup power source in emergencies and for use on the farm or even just for taking a few bucks out of the energy bill each month. It's built with parts you can find at most hardware stores and online or uh, Home Depot, Lowe's. Nothing too fancy but reliable parts that can be upgraded as a modular system. It's built upon a 55 amp hour AGM gel type battery and a 1000 watt continuous power inverter. It has a pure sine wave inverter with a 150 amp circuit breaker underneath. The solar charge controller has a nice digital display showing battery voltage in real time. It shows the charge current coming in from your solar panels. Uh, it has warning uh, and error alerts, ambient operating temperature, uh, it shows the output or load current. It has uh, two USB ports and dual 12 volt outlets and this unit is rated up to 20 amps of power. With the pure sine wave inverter, you can run sensitive electronics like laptops or uh, tablets and phones and uh, TVs, anything like that, even uh, radio equipment, and you'll get virtually no uh, interference or uh, harmonic distortion from the, uh, from the power. This inverter shows the battery voltage and output current as well and has an extra USB charging port as well as a remote outlet for external on-off control. The two outlets are GFCI uh, protected. This inverter is rated up to um, 1000 watts continuous with a 2000 watt peak. When you're ready to hook up the solar panel, it couldn't be easier. You just pop in the corresponding MC4 cables, the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative, and you're ready to go. I also have a MC4 uh, connector tool um, in, this, in this box as well because uh, these MC4 connectors are kind of challenging getting apart, especially when they're new. They, they kind of have to, uh, to be broken in a little bit. With this particular design, everything is pretty much self-contained except for the solar panel. So if you need to just throw this thing in the back of the truck or on a boat or wheel it out into a, uh, to a field for powering lights or, or power tools, it's ready to go. It's a sturdy unit. So I put together this little demonstration of how it actually works. I roll the thing up to, uh, to my front door and I hook up the solar panel and just walk it out into the, the front yard and just kind of prop it up against a, uh, a little PVC uh, tube that I just stick in the ground. Point it directly at the sun as it, as it clocks around and it, it works great. It, it's very little hassle to it. You don't have to worry about uh, sun trackers or mounting poles or, or plates or anything like that. And this 50 watt panel, believe it or not, it will easily charge this, this battery. Um, it, it could charge it a couple times over uh, during the day. Even in fairly cloudy weather, I still get, you know, I can still get over two amps uh, with it, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. It's a, um, a pretty efficient solar panel. It's a monocrystalline uh, style panel. And of course, if I hook up my 100 watt panel, it will charge it in half the time. Um, so the beauty is really in the simplicity and you can set it up anywhere that you, you know, that you have some sun.
I had actually used the system uh, the night before this demo and drained down the battery using some power tools and some lights and charging cell phones and tablets. And whenever I put it out in the morning, I think the reading was actually 12.6 volts on the battery. So this will show you exactly what type of current will start charging your, your battery and when it'll actually go into float mode where it's sending a charge to your battery until it hits about 15 volts and then it'll it'll just decrease the charge current to zero until that uh, maximum voltage drops back down and it'll just keep floating and, and keep your batteries topped off um, as long as there's charge current coming in. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this 20 amp circuit breaker to the solar panel just to show you how the uh, battery will uh, fall back to its normal operating voltage, but that, that's totally normal. It does mean that the battery is still fully topped off. When it's hooked up to the solar panel and to the charge controller, it will, it'll have a slight higher voltage in comparison to what it normally operates at. So whenever you do cut the, the solar power, it will drop back down to somewhere between 12.8 and usually 3.2 volts, uh, depending on how large your, your battery is. Okay, here the charge controller has actually gone into float mode. So the battery is topped off. Now granted, this is actually the uh, winter solstice. This is the shortest day of sun that we have all year long. Uh, so it's, it's not gonna be as intense uh, charge current as you would get you know, in the middle of the summer, uh, sun directly overhead, you know, somewhere out in uh, Arizona, for example. But it does show you what a little 50 watt panel is capable of doing. You can actually run a fairly good size load on this without uh, taking any power away from the battery as long as it's not more than 2.4 2.5 amps from your battery. It just takes it you know, directly from the solar panel so there's, there's really no loss of power. This is just a very small LED TV uh, with a DVD uh, player built in it, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't draw a whole lot of power because it, it automatically runs on, on 12 volt power anyway. Um, I think it actually uses less than one amp. So I can actually uh, continue to charge my battery and watch TV at the same time with a 50 watt panel uh, without taking a hit to the battery at all. Ironically, after I built this particular unit, the very next day uh, in the evening, I had a, had a power outage. It only lasted for about maybe an hour, hour and a half, but I did pull out the unit and I was able to, uh, to charge uh, my phone and tablet and uh, turn on some lights and even watch a little TV as I'll do a demonstration here. And although the uh, TV screen here is a little bit tough to see because of the glare coming in from the window, um, you can tell that there's no flickering of the screen, uh, there's no you know, cutting out of the power or the sound, anything like that. It totally runs it perfectly fine, uh, the TV and the DVD at the, at the same time. 